Hazelton City Council regular meeting Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. We'll come to order. Let's rise for a moment of silent meditation. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call. Bast? Here. Cassatt? Here. Mope? Here. Sosar? Here. Mundy? Here. First on our agenda is approving the minutes of the previous meeting, April 8, 2014. <coughs> Regular meeting. Presented. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Passed. Proclamations, communications, none. Courtesy floor regarding matters on our agenda only today. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Sylvia Thomas from Hazleton. So some of you are concerned that cameras on Alder Street may chase criminals to other sections of the city. Are you afraid the criminals may go to, say, the Heights? Or maybe James Street? Well, we have news for you. The bad guys are all over the city. When people come to me and say, I see an awful lot of people going and coming at a certain house. That house isn't just on Alder Street. It's on Locust Street, on Vine Street, and maybe Second Street. So what the three musketeers sitting at that table are saying to the criminals, as long as you stay in the Alder Street area, we won't keep an eye on you. Those of us who live in the Alder Street area are tax-paying citizens. And you three are denying us our right to protection by the city of Hazleton. You are endangering our lives, businesses, and property values. And we are not going to let you get away with it. So you say you're concerned because the cameras take money away from police overtime. Were you, Gene Mope, concerned about police pay and overtime when you, in December of, and I have a copy of the newspaper article, in December of 2012, proposed cutting police salaries by $240,000. Cutting police benefits and police overtime by $100,000 each. Were you concerned then? Yes. Those cameras have been approved not just by the previous council, but by our chief of police and our community development director. Half of that contract has already been paid for. The article in uh, the paper on uh, April 10th states that Jean wants to know where in Hazleton, other than Alder Street, this camera system would ser serve. I was sitting right there when Police Chief DeAndrea got up to this podium and told all of us where the cameras were going to be throughout the city. It's in the paper. How many times do you have to be told? Did any of you bother to call the chief? or email him and ask him where the cameras were going? I doubt it, or else you wouldn't be asking now. Eugene also, and this hurts the most, you came to our Alder Street Crime Watch meetings and had its members thinking you were in favor of cameras on Alder Street. I believe you and Mr. Mundy signed a petition for cameras on Alder Street. And you, Mr. Mundy, once you said to we're me- We're going to pass the, that. No, 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 questions. you're gonna listen to me. Uh, I have a right to say what I'm saying. Could, you, could, you could go ahead, but go ahead. But we just had some questions last week, that's all. You tabled it. We're, we're, we waited a year and a half for those cameras, and we're not going to give up until we get them. Okay, go ahead. And you, Mr. Mundy, said to me, I couldn't sleep <laughs> at night if I didn't help the people. And I, and I believed you. Wait a minute. Point I of order. To, this is one. not now, back stop and forth. Point me. of order. This I, is her I was, turn to speak, Sylvia, Jack. I was the point one of order. that asked point for cameras order, when I first was elected. If you want to cut her off, go ahead. When I was first I want, elected. No, I want, I want go to, ahead. You could say what you want when i done. Go ahead. Mr. Sosar, you said in the article that you questioned the $30,000 reduction in police service funds. Did you know that we have three policemen for every shift? 
a city of 25 to 33,000, no one seems to know what the population is. Did you know that even though we pay our policemen and women a good salary, there were only seven applications when the police chief hired two policemen? Don't you realize how overworked our policemen and women are? But those cameras will work 24 seven. I think you think because you're the majority, you could do anything you want. Well, we have more news for you. No, you can't do anything you want. We don't work for you, you work for us. And if you think you can endanger our lives, property, and deny us our rights, you are very mistaken. The Alder Street Crime Watch wants to thank the people who showed up from other crime groups, groups. We hope it will change your mind and you will give the people of Hazleton those 24 cameras that are gonna be positioned throughout the city. Those cameras aren't gonna solve all our problems, but they're going to help. And we strongly recommend that maybe two of you out of the three, we'll think the next time before you let the one who came up with this fiasco of steer you in the wrong direction again. And that's all. I have something to say at the end of the meeting. Oh, one more thing, Chief DeAndrea. I'm volunteering for, to watch the cameras for a couple hours a week. Thank you. Thank you. As Judy Urcho Hazelton, um, as I agree with Sylvia about the cameras, my concern is who's going to watch them. And I, I applaud you that you're going to watch them a couple of hours a week. But if we don't have a 24-7, the cameras aren't going to do us any good, Sylvia. And, and that's the problem. We have crime that's there. And if we watch the tapes eight hours later, the person that did it is already gone. Monitoring them 24-7 is going to help us not having them there and reviewing tapes later on. Right. And that is the concern that I have. So I don't, my, I, I, hey, I'm all for it. And I, I know no matter, it's just like the crime watches. You have them in one area, you might push the crime into another area. What we need to do is push it out of town. Right. That's, that's our thing. But if we have cameras, you have to realize these cameras aren't like what you're gonna see on NCIS. We're not gonna have digitally enhanced faces. Some of these are only going to be blurs. We're going to go on descriptions. And if we don't get it while the people are doing the crime, we're, the chances of catching them aren't there. They have cameras all over Wilkes-Barre. They do. And they still have a high crime rate. They still have a high murder rate. That's our problem. We have to have them monitored so that we can say, dispatch, go here. This is where it's at. I'm not against having cameras. I just need to know that there is something there that people will be monitoring. I mean, if you're gonna put all this money out, there has to be people there. I'm with you, I'll, I'll, I'll sit for a couple hours and watch the cameras. I have no problem with that. But it's not gonna work to put $150,000 of cameras in there and then say, well, it didn't really help. They did it up in Wilkes-Barre. There's cameras all over the place up in Wilkes-Barre and their crime rate is still bad up there. They're still having problems. So. When we have this, let's make sure that we have someone to monitor. That's what I'm concerned about. Let's make sure that there, something is set in place. Because if we're going to shell out all this money, it's not going to do us a damn bit of good if we have no one to monitor them. And that's all i got to say on that. Point, point of order here. I'd Go like ahead. to defer from, um, from our, our agenda for two minutes. And I'd like to discuss this with Sylvia. And Sylvia, we are not against the cameras. We wanted Chief DeAndrea to come here so we could ask him a few questions on it. Well, wait, wait, wait. Now let me talk, Sylvia. This is not our first trip around the block with cameras. We did this already. Some cameras are dark, okay? We had people, and you have to understand, we're not just dealing with your problem on Alter Street. We're dealing with the rest of the city, and we're also dis dealing with a previous problem when people went out and purchased this camera system. So they had bought expensive cameras, all right, and we had a problem with the transmission on them, and it didn't work out. We ended up uh, with a second monitor as well. Now, I had gone downstairs after one of our meetings here, and it was before the window was blocked off at the police, in the police department. And I looked, there was two at the most, 
cameras operating out of all of them that were purchased plus we heard from the people that did purchase the cameras they were mad because they went through all this expense and they weren't getting what they were promised they were left stuck with cameras and no signals being transmitted so before we had another fiasco and we spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars all right we wanted to do a trial area and this is what we talked about now i have the minutes right here and the minutes are from december 5th 2013 monday asked what is this about chief deandrea said these cameras are for alter street and that's where we were starting with alter street as an incubation area to see how it worked out and then we would have expanded on it and if there was problems, we could have fixed them and tweaked them and did what we had to do before we bought cameras for more and more areas. Plus, we had money for patrols, all right, which uh, wh while we're protecting you on Alter Street with cameras, we still wanted to make sure the rest of the residents in the city, because there was a lady on James Street, and it happened not to be Grace. It was a lady who got her windows BB shot out and her tires slashed, and she had to keep paying the deductible on her car insurance, and it was asking for help. And we were going to direct the chief to see if he could have extra patrols. I understand what we're saying. Th these were our concerns. We wanted to make sure if it, we put a camera <coughs> system in, you know were gonna get your money worth. We were gonna get our money worth, and CD's money was gonna be spent properly. The chief looked at everything, I imagine, because I have all the specs on this and, and everything that he ordered for the camera. 79,000 was, uh, 75,000 almost was the original first half of it. Then we had to get now this other 75,000. But what Dr. Sosar said was we weren't happy with the big chunk of money that was also being taken away from the patrols. While we're trying to, while we're trying to help you, Sylvia, we're also trying not to hurt the other people in the, in the city because they need patrols too. So you are getting your cameras if, if the vote goes through, which I, I'm sure it will, for Alter Street. It wasn't a question of that. It was a question of we had also had cameras, according to the specs, gotten for um, Diamond Avenue and Cedar Street green and wyoming street all right the money was also spent for four more cameras at 15th and alter street there's 12 cameras going on alter there's uh things going on the mckinley tank towers because they had problems with i guess sending the signal back to city hall and if we're going to spend this money all we wanted to do was make sure your money was being spent right and in the best possible way that you have got your bang for your dollar. Understand, it wasn't we were against, so don't stand there. And I, when I made that statement, no, no, when I, when I made the statement, please, Sylvia, let me finish. I was at your crime watch meeting. We had that officer there that was from the gangs. He told us about, he told us about all the, the, the different criminal activities and the signs and everything. And I asked him about the camera system. And what his statement he made to me was, and I'm not sure if you've heard it, he said it was like a tomato. And he wasn't exactly popular with them because as far as he was concerned, it was a gray area if they worked or not. He said it was like a tomato. When you hit it, it splatters. And that was one of the things he didn't like about it. But regardless, we still voted and said, yeah, we're gonna get cameras to try and see how it works out. And if it works, fine, we'll put them, we'll put them where they're needed as long as we can afford it. But also you have to remember, this was a trial incubation area. So before you get yourself all excited and worked up over what you're not, you weren't at the last no, meeting. Excuse me. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and they, will, they will go to other sections of the city. And so therefore, we're gonna have to do something to address that. This is why we said if they are gonna go to other sections, not that, don't trust me, they're not gonna leave you. You are looking for a, a silver magic bullet and there is no such thing, okay? 
you know you are still going to end up with criminals, like Judy said, unless it's monitored and watched, all right? And that's the key thing. We need them monitored and watched all the time. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I think Chief DeAndrea can elaborate on this. I think you'll be able to view them from portable, from the cars, from computers, if I'm not mistaken. Pardon me? We don't have car computers. Well, is there a way that you'll be able to, uh, other than at City Hall, you'll be able to monitor these cameras? There, there, there would be a remote access if we wanted to use a car computer if we ever had them. Down the line. All right. Smartphones, Smartphones you, can, you can monitor by as well? Okay. 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 Well, when it comes up, the now, chief could talk about it. Now, this is what, be, uh, well, I wanted to talk before they went off on a tangent. Because we weren't against you, and I wish you were at the meeting last week, because you would have known that. I didn't vote. I, I was sick that day. I took her out. And I know, but I you, you misunderstood what we were saying, evidently. Because we weren't saying we were against it. We were saying we wanted the chief here, and we wanted to ask more questions about it. Well, Sylvia, unfortunately, not everything you read is always correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any, anyone else? Go ahead. D.D. Kiss Hazelton. I'm in support of the cameras, but there are some very serious problems when they put the first set of cameras in. I know one businessman who had a camera on. He had a robbery. He went to City Hall to get the video of it, and guess what? The camera here was out, and nobody at City Hall informed him. I have another business that I know downtown that the camera was able to point at where the robbery was, and they asked two policemen about getting the camera video. Now, this was before Chief DeAndre, I'll give him that. And they wouldn't do it. And he, they had to go to Chief Ferdinand. And then they got a picture of the person who did the robbery. And what's happening is they didn't even look once a day to see if these cameras were on. And that, to me, is serious. So if we get more cameras, what stops? What corrects the problems of the fact that the cameras we have, and if they're not working, who tells them, hey, these aren't working, they should go out for repair? And again, if they're not monitored. Now, I was at the meeting where the chamber had it in City Hall about a year and a half ago, and there was a very good suggestion. We have firemen on duty all 24 hours. Why can't they have feeds going in every one of those fire stations? Because there are time periods where firemen are not out on their truck, and they could be monitoring it. And that's the whole thing, is if you don't monitor it, <clears throat> what's the point? And if the policemen are refusing to go back and look at crimes that did happen, what's the point? And if a camera's out, I, I was down in the one tour where they showed it. The one camera that was from standard speaker was very blurred and they should have known that their camera was ineffective, and a couple were out. And now they've covered that window. You can't even see what those cameras are, which is a shame, because I always like looking to see what the cameras look like. And it just doesn't give me a warm feeling that this practice is going to continue, that they can't even look at the cameras once a day and inform people that have cameras that they were out. And until you spend the money and you really correct those problems on monitoring, and uh, if a camera goes out that is immediately repaired, maybe you need to uh, look into that before you spend the money. Thank you. <clears throat> Mark Rabo, First Street, Hazleton. In regards to uh, resolution 24, 2014-48 uh, regarding the planning grant for the Keystone Communities uh, program, will that include uh, the blighted neighborhoods around the downtown area? And uh, if so, uh, who will be doing uh, that? Will the Redevelopment Authority be doing that? And I also had a question for uh, Fallon, uh, because the last time I was here, uh, she left uh, before asking the question, public comment. Uh, did the Redevelopment Authority meet on March 6th? And that's, those are the two questions I have. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Grace Cuso. This is on 2014-48. Uh, it's saying now the city will assume the provision for the full local share. Where is that coming from? To, evidently you have to match or there's a percentage needed? Mm -hmm. Well, that's Fallon. Fallon. It's the Keystone Communities. Yeah, I, I, it. We'll talk about it when the, when it comes up. Pardon me? Yeah. We'll talk about it when it comes up. We'll talk about it when it comes up. Yeah, we'll yes. ask the question when it comes up. <laughs> Any other questions for, on the agenda only? Okay, we'll move on to ordinances. Ordinances 2014-2014 for an ordinance approving a modification to the CDBG action plan for fiscal year 2014. It was tabled on 4814. <coughs> we need a, a motion to take it off the table. Uh, I'll take it off. Second. Second. On the motion to take it off the table. Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Okay, it's back on. Uh, do I have uh, somebody present it? I'll present it. I'll second it. On the question? Maybe, Chief, maybe you could come up. Uh, uh, There's a couple questions some people had. Maybe you could help us, help us out. And Fallon, too. <laughs> Fallon could be uh, I Fallon. think most of your questions will probably end up for me. Well, okay. Fallon could, yeah, you could go up there too, Fallon, in case we have some questions. Come on, Fallon. <laughs> he won't bite. I hope not. I mean, as far as I remember from last year when, when discussing this whole application process is that it was to be basically citywide when, when we discussed this, Chief, that it was going to start with Alter Street and some, some other specific right. locations. Uh, and then move on from there when we were able to expand it. Can you just expand it? Can you just expand on? I, I know that I discussed this with you. I don't know if it was here at the council meeting or if it was privately, but uh, when we did vote on this last year. Yeah, it was several different council meetings that we discussed the citywide camera plan. Right. I never referred to it as the Alter Street camera system. Yeah. And the minutes from December 5th that you're referring to, if you actually listened to the tape, you would hear Council President at the time, Perry, said at the start of the, at one hour and 43 minutes into the meeting when I began to speak about, at that time, 21, said, Chief, this is about the camera system for Alter Street. And the first words out of my mouth were, for the entire city. And I went on to explain that the camera system was going to start on Alter Street and areas, major areas of ingress and egress for the city. And the reason why it was going to start on Alter Street was because I was keeping my promise to Sylvia and the Alter Street Crime Watch because one month is me being chief, April 12th of 2012, I went to the Laurel Street Crime Watch meeting, met Sylvia for the first time, and as her question to me was, Chief, what about a camera system? And that started me looking into it and every month we would talk and it got to the point where since Alter Street brought the camera system up, my promise to Alter Street's Crime Watch was when we're able to roll one out, we will start on Alter Street. Not start and test it, nor did I ever say it was a test bed. I said the first implementation of the rollout would be cameras for Alter Street simply because the majority of the funds for the first part of the rollout are the back of the house, which is the network video recorder, the installation of antennas, transmitters, a wireless network throughout this, the city that you're going to do. And if I can take as an aside here and answer part of some of the things that came up, the McKinley Street Tower has nothing to do with the, with the current implementation of the camera system right now. The requests that went to the Hazleton City Authority are to solve a communication problem with the City of Hazleton's Police Department 
all of the police departments in Lower Luzerne County that use Zone E to include West Hazelton. The entire north side, northwest side of the city is a dead spot for our communications. And we can't upgrade our portable transceivers, our portable radios. And so Luzerne County 911, because the Hazelton Police Department owns our radio frequency, can't fix our radio problem. But what they said is, if we get permission from the Water Authority to hang an antenna, that will cover our communications. Now, as we move forward with the rollout of cameras, I'm positive we will go back to HCA and request of the Water Authority, could we now enter an, into an agreement where we could possibly hang one transmitter for the, uh, the camera system on there? But right now, the work that's going on on the water tank is to fix our communications problem where we can't transmit on the northwest side of the city. At the same time, we enter into or attempting to enter into a co-location agreement with the HCA and the West Hazelton Police Department because they actually transmit on Luzerne Channel E, southern end of Luzerne County. And that zone has the same dead spot. So instead of us being pigs, hogs, and since the HCA also serves West Hazelton, we came into an agreement that said, if we're gonna hang this dish, then let that dish do a dual frequency that will also fix West Hazelton's problem at the same time with transmitting on their radios. So currently, we're not trying to do anything with the camera system on the water tank. That is going on to fix a communication problem. But back to your question. The initial rollout and the cost of it, as I explained on De December 5th, was that we were going to spend 50% of the money up front to do all of the purchases of everything we could afford the 50% was the money that we were going to lose from 2012 if it wasn't spent by December 31st of 2013. We were going to lose all of that money, which I believe was in the, about fifty-three dollars or $54,000. We were going to lose it, as well as what we had for the camera system set aside from 2013. We would have also lost that. We combined them together. It came to slightly over $70,000. And that was what was spent as half of the contract. The other half has to be paid this year. Now the problem was that initially Fallon, by no fault of hers, came to me and said this was before the RFP was signed, before the contract was negotiated, before we selected a vendor. Fallon said, Chief, what will you need for next year police patrols and camera system. I had no idea at the time. And so I said to Fallon, please just use as a placeholder the exact same thing that we had in 2013, and when it comes time, we can make the change by going in front of city council and asking a transfer. Normally, we wouldn't even be here because the initial budget that was done would have put the money where it needed to. That's my fault for not knowing in September or October when Fallon had to do her budget exactly where the money was going to land. But with this system, as you stated, Councilwoman, there are four cameras on 15th and Alter Street. I don't consider that Alter Street. I consider that the business that is robbed the most in the city of Hazelton. Four cameras go in that intersection because it's also a high traffic, high volume area where we have a lot of serious accidents. The intersection of Wyoming and Green Street, again one of our highest crime intersections, some serious accidents, some vehicle rollovers, Wyoming and Green Street, two homicides, shootings, stabbings, aggravated assaults, that's why that was chosen as a test bed. And the third one is the pantry quick slash beer garage on Cedar and Diamond, Wyoming and Diamond, I'm, I'm sorry, Cedar and Diamond or Cybert and Diamond depending on which way you're coming. That's the third intersection. Along with 12 cameras on Alter Street from, I believe, 1st Street to 5th Street, or 1st Street to 4th Street, uh, three on each intersection pointing in multiple directions to capture everything. All the cameras are state-of-the-art state PTZ, pan, tilt, zoom. So they're able to zoom in. They're extremely high resolution cameras 
so that you can make out faces and identify people and read license plates and do any of that from a remote area as well as, depending on how the cameras are set up. The back end of this camera system is extremely expandable so that as we're able to find more money, increase, add cameras any way that we can, whether it be through community development or anything else, <coughs> we're able to expand the network and we're not to the point where, oh, sorry, you can't plug another thing in. The worst thing would be, um, or the worst case scenario would be, we're out of room on a network video recorder, which is called an NVR, and we just need to buy another one. And that allows us to expand either 16 or 32 cameras on each network video recorder, depending on if you want to leave the tape for 30 days or 15 days or eight days. Well, part of what we're doing right now is uh, we anticipate they, they can go anywhere. We anticipate that they will go on poles. But to go on poles right now, myself and the uh, systems integrator, Convergence, is working with PPL. We have to identify every pole that we want to use, and then we have to submit for the permit from PPL to be allowed to hang anything on a pole. Even if the city owns the pole because there's power from PPL, we have to have them come out and do their free study to say, yes, you can put something on there. And the other thing I need to make sure, since these cameras take power even though it's low voltage, is the fact that we're on what I call the city's side of the meter. So that we're not just hooking things up and taking power from PPL and, and in all, you know, all intents and purposes, you, you can't steal power, uh, especially for a police camera system. But they are, they are, they could be hung anywhere. One of the reasons these cameras were chose was because I need a camera that has a heater and a cooling system so that the cameras could work when it's cold and when it's hot. And so you have to get a special housing because of the area that we live in to put the cameras inside so that when you go to look at a camera and it happened to be 10 degrees below zero or just zero, you don't look and say, oh, well, the camera was, it shuts off at 20 degrees. So I, I, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the camera system that we're getting. Um, I'm, I'm also proud of where we're at. I, I truly believe it will help immensely. Addressing the other half of when Dr. Sosar had asked last meeting, and I believe um, that the concern was we're taking away from police coverage. First of all, I can't spend community development money on North James Street because it's not a low mod district. So if I was out doing community development patrol, that's one area of the city I can't go to on community development anyway. There are special areas and only certain areas that we're allowed to be in for that. That was one of the reasons right. we wanted you here so we could ask. Right, Under, understood. And, and I'm happy to be here. I, it, it's, it's my job. I'm more than happy to answer the questions. But as far as the police patrols, I've said this since day one, and I continue to repeat, the city of Hazleton does not have enough police officers. There's no way of, of working that whack-a-mole game. And the fact is, like a tomato, that's crime to me. And I plan on whacking that tomato, and I know that it's going to scatter. And the fact is that I'm going to have to go to the next part of town that it ran to and smack it again and let it go to the next part. Uh, that's just the, the constant flow of it. I, but I have I, one quick question. Go ahead. Chief. Is, are, are these cameras, are they going to be monitored 24 hours a day? Absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. I would love to be able to bring volunteers in. Are they going to be monitored eight hours or so many hours? Or? No. There's no plans on, on, on saying that they're going to be monitored any specific period of time okay. every day. They'll have the ability to be monitored, but monitoring the cameras is not what helps. I'm not saying that it hurts. I'm simply saying that there are a couple of things that we need. I need the ability to have cameras, first of all. Because without cameras, everybody knows, well, they're never going to be able to watch me, first. Second of all, being able to have them becomes a crime deterrent for some people. Other people, for instance, if cameras deterred all crime, there'd never be a bank robbery, because everybody knows there's cameras in banks, yet we still have bank robbers. So they deter some people who don't want to get caught, and other people don't care about them. But there are bank robberies and crimes 
We solved the last homicide, February 2nd, because there happened to be video cameras, not only in the police car, the state police car that pulled up while the shooting was taking place, but because the bar had cameras that allowed us to identify who did the shooting and exactly what happened. That whole homicide was solved based on the quick response of the Pennsylvania State Police, their camera system, and the, uh, does, the camera does system Wilkes at the bar. Does still monitor their, theirs, Chief? No. Does what? Does wilkes -Barre still have monitoring of their... Oh, I apologize. I thought you said that, do we still monitor theirs, no. meaning the state police cameras? No, wilkes -Barre. I have no idea if they're no, they, monitoring... they did at one time. Yeah, but they did that through a, a grant from Frontier. Yeah. Um, the issue becomes, again, I continue to stress, we don't have enough police. So if you want me, and I'm not saying you want me to, but if anybody wants me to take a cop off the road well, to watch not, cameras, we no, can't. No, I, I don't think that would right. be smart. I mean, uh, how about partnering maybe with URS or some other agency to get, and getting some people to monitor I'm that. not saying it's a bad idea. What I'm simply saying is that this camera system was never presented as going to be monitored, ever. Never, ever, ever was it presented as that. There are all kind of opportunities for us to bring in volunteers, for us to see if we can't have a remote feed to a fire department. They're all great ideas. I'm not against the monitoring. What I'm against is if I had to take a police officer off the road to sit and watch cameras. No. But no. at the same time, the cameras are a phenomenal asset when it comes to the ability to go back and say, oh, it was a white car that did that shooting. Or that's not how it transpired, even though they're saying that this fight took place, it did. They're a phenomenal tool. Go ahead. Excuse me. And that is one of the things I wanted you people to understand. Because it's not being monitored all the time. Right. If there is something going on right at that particular time, all right, that doesn't mean the police know it's actually going no. on. I don't know of because anywhere you that you really have that. Pardon? I don't know of anywhere where you really have that, where people are monitoring to them to the point where they send a police officer in anticipation of a crime occurring. That's it, what I want them to understand. I mean, it's beneficial, but it's not right. going to cure the crime when it's happening instantly. Yeah. Understand? But, but yeah, with that, that what I wanted that. to address yeah. was the, the final portion of this with the reducing police coverage. As I said, when Councilman Mundy wanted to take money from community development when we were still discussing the budget, it was either in December or January. And I explained then, he wanted to give us $10,000 for additional police coverage at the time. Several times I've been in front of you, and the issue has come up where we weren't happy with police officers overtimes because of the amount that they got paid and then they retired. And so when I'm paying overtime, the issue becomes you're paying overtime. Now when I'm saying I don't have enough police officers on the road to spend the money on overtime, I just can't do it. And that's why I had requested that you don't take money from community development from, from one place and put it into additional police coverage because when I'm done paying my mandatory overtime, and mandatory overtime is when an officer called in sick and I don't have enough police officers to be on the road. I have to pay somebody overtime. Mandatory overtime is when we arrest somebody and I don't have enough officers waiting, so they have to go in the city hall jail downstairs until the next shift comes in, and when they have three officers, I have to hold somebody over from the previous shift on overtime, have them do the charges, and have them haul them to Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. So the mandatory overtime, by the time we're done with just that, not the reimbursable overtime, we're up to over $105,000 in mandatory overtime. So because of it, I get to the point where I don't have enough police officers to spend all of the additional money. Go ahead, and then Dr. Sosa. Where, where it gets confusing for me. Uh, when we talked about the, the money from CD, and, uh, and this is why it's with balance here, for the extra patrols like we had for the Pine Street uh, project. Right. right. I never assumed, and maybe I was wrong, and if I am, I apologize, that that was overtime money. I thought that was money that was provided from CD to patrol the troubled areas. It, overtime. It is overtime? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and because, thank as a matter of fact, again, I thank Grace for that. She was the one who pointed out when I, somewhere right around when I became chief in 2012, that it specifically said 
The money must be used for above and beyond police services. It cannot ever be used to pay a police officer's straight time salary. I must have police officers on overtime to be allowed to use community development to assist that. So because of it, I then roll around to the problem that I have with when we're done paying all of the extra overtime that we have to, and the reimbursable overtime from the Attorney General's task force from the DEA, um, previously from the FBI, but not this year, um, from any grant that we got, I don't have enough officers left to sign up for these extra duties. And because I, I, I'm getting emails and letters, actually not an email, a letter from the Lehigh Valley Hospital, Hazleton. And the doctor is commenting on how extremely worn out, how extremely tired, more so than normal, my police officers look when they're up there. And she's concerned for their well-being because of the shifts that they're working and the amount of time that they're spending. And she's right. The, the fact is that, so I'm looking at it thinking, well, how do I solve this? Because I recognize I'd love for you to surprise me one city council meeting and say, Chief, we're hiring 10 more cops. Until that surprise, I recognize that we aren't going to come up with the money necessarily today to get new cops. What can I do? I could put cameras on corners to help me when I'm not there. And this is one of the deployments. Now, one of the, I'll say, the, uh, the, the unique parts about this camera system that I thought of long ago, I verified that it works with our integrator and with uh, Dominic Inuzzi from the, who, who was doing the PennDOT corridor. The fact is that next year, I'm going to request from community development that they don't give the police department any community development money that it all goes to the fire department. The reason why is because I learned in a staff meeting last week that we need a new pumper truck. A new pumper truck is, you know, if Chief Bleschko was here, he could verify, but it's over $300,000. My thoughts are very simple, and I think that this, this should make us at least a little bit happy. It's not police money, it's community development money. Next year, my anticipation is that I, I'm, I can give the police portion, if it's allowed or legal, we give it to the fire department. They can buy a pumper truck with a three-year payment plan, use my $100,000 next year or whereabouts to make their first year's payments. The second year, they use their own community development money. The third year, they use theirs, and the city is now the owner of a brand new pumper truck at no additional expense, no capital purchase, at the same time, after, if you're so gracious as to vote yes tonight for this, um, after this initial deployment, I spent a, year, a, a lifetime in the state police, and one of the things that I know is that anytime there's a serious incident, the state police watch center flips a switch and can view any pen dot camera anywhere in the Commonwealth and the turnpike cameras and the toll booth cameras. And so, we just put a brand new traffic corridor in, and I knew that we, right now, from the hospital to Diamond and Broad Street, there are 36 cameras on Broad Street. Every one of those cameras is able to be networked into our camera system. 36 cameras are going to cover every intersection on the Broad Street corridor, and, and we didn't even pay for the cameras. The city maintains, will we'll maintain the camera. But those cameras, because of the system that we're putting in, are going to be able to be integrated right into our system, as well as West Hazleton's cameras from um, Broad and 15th Street. If we can enter into an agreement with West Hazleton, which I'm sure that that should be able to happen, we'll be able to watch them. So I get major points of ingress and egress. The cameras, the back end of that system, the PennDOT system, the brains of that, the computer and the network are going to be right here in City Hall. So the fact is that I'm not even going to have to run any kind of wireless feed. All I'm going to have to do is run a line from that network to our computer network and we'll be able to increase our cameras by 40 without the cost of a camera. What's the typical life expectancy of the cameras? That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I can't answer that tonight. I can get you one. Years. Years. But the fact is that one of the questions that came up 
Um, I don't remember who asked it, I apologize, because um, I was paying attention, but I don't remember who asked the question, was the fixing of the old system. I cannot mix apples and oranges. Now, December 5th, Councilwoman, you had asked me if those old cameras would be able to be linked to this. Right. And I said at the time, I need to be very careful with how I do that because I am not allowed, it is illegal to spend any community development money on fixing something that was old. The city has, when you get these grants, maintenance is not allowed to be incorporated. Even with that old system, because you know the, the entities bought the cameras, all right. right? And we did the, the transmittal part of it. Right. So that was, would have been the part that we would have had to fix. And that's when you did say at the meeting, that you can't repair. You know, not with community development money. Community right. Development. And the problem is that I don't have a line item to go out and spend money on that camera system. And the finger pointing that took place with an old system when you own half and I own half and you own half and I own half is who pays the bill for the person to go out to say it's your half or my half or your half or my half. So what ends up happening is there's finger pointing of who's going to pay to find out whose fault it is, and then what do we fix? With this system... And this is why this is like the exactly. second trip around with us right. with cameras. And with and this system, get it right. what I said to you is I believe that because we are the keeper of the entire kingdom, we own the front end, the back end, and everything in the middle, that there can't be any finger pointing. Okay, Dr. Sosa, I would like to ask Go ahead. some questions. Sure. Okay, and, and this is a follow-up to what was just mentioned, Chief. You talked about the past system. The, the past system is not going to be integrated at all? No, no, no. With, with, with the system that we're no. talking about now? The, the cameras that are working yes. on the old system are able to be viewed because I made sure that we spec'd the same software. So any cameras that are working can be viewed on the same screen and it's not, oh, I flipped this switch to look here and that one to, to, to look there. How many are working? I don't know today. I, I, I don't have that number and or the ones that are not working, can we, is there any way, and we have any idea, cost-wise, what it will cost to fix those? We have no idea what it will cost, but we don't own them. And there becomes the issue. How do I ask the city to spend money to fix somebody else's piece of equipment? But there was, there, uh, some of those, as I remember correctly, and in fact, sitting last year and listening to some people, especially, for example, the, the Little League. The Little League. The Little League has cameras that this just don't work. But we don't own their cameras, they do. It, I believe it was purchased with CD money. I believe it was CD money. Uh, explain it to me, uh, please. The, the cameras from some of the restaurants that purchased the cameras, um, Little League, they were through a business loan through the city, through CD. They weren't directly CD money. It was a business loan that they paid back. Little League paid their loan back already. Um, the other restaurants that were on Wyoming Street, they paid their loans back. Alan, Little League paid their total loan yep. back? Okay. They did. Um, I can get you the exact date. I don't have that with me. Uh, I know they were upset because they... They, they were very upset, yes. They don't have usage of the camera system. Mm -hmm. you know, and that was and their main concern. That was one thing that they were very upset about. There's That's a, why we need to have a, a system that works. Yeah, there's a couple things that are going on with this, and I see John over there, and it, it may end up needing your input on this as well. Because, uh, and, and were the, the cameras that were put into McKinley Park and the McKinley Tank not only part of the CD money as well? They were not, you're telling me. We purchased those ourselves. Have they ever worked? They, they work all the time. They, I believe also we purchased the repeaters. And that's what I'm asking. That's what, one of the things I wanted to get to next. My understanding of the system is that you would, I think you mentioned, the original system. John. The city, you go up. The city purchased the back end, if I have to borrow Frank's term, okay? They borrowed, they purchased the equipment that was here. They went out into the community and said, you could purchase your e equipment, i.e. cameras, that could hook into this system, and that's where many business owners, the Little League, the HCA, we went out and we purchased the cameras. If I remember correct, Dave, and I'm gonna have to go back to the uh, records, 
I believe we spent, was it 7900 to put the repeaters up on McKinley Street, and there was some electrical work that was necessary. And but, I, I, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re- I'll, I'll, I'll ask those records to be pulled, but pulled we, we, we purchased that because the city didn't have the money to finish out the project. Pull them, and, and one other thing that I need to know, and Chief, this is for you and John and Fallon again as well. The, ci- the city authority put together a line of sight of three towers within the city, and it was my impression that the line of sight was for Chief, I'm sorry, I, I, and, and maybe I misunderstood this. I'll be more than happy to take it back. But I was under the impression that the line of sight of the three towers that we put together were part of the signal that was to be sent back to City Hall that really never worked well in terms of the cameras and maybe the information that you were talking about is repeaters for uh, uh, they were specifically for that as they well, were specifically for the camera this, system. The line of sight really has never worked well. No, they they were specifically for that camera system. They have nothing to do. What he's requ- what he's what we're working on right now is a different system, as he said, with the radio frequency. Has nothing to do with the camera frequency, which is a different frequency. And uh, we're in the middle of. Uh, settling some legal issues between your solicitor and our solicitor so that we can finalize that and hopefully get get the uh, police department the help they need. Okay. Th- oh, yeah, thank you, John. I, I need, Chief, I need your information now. Uh, I think there's, there's three separate McKinley Street Tower issues. Well, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, uh, I believe that there, I mean, we had towers used for the telephone service, I believe we had the towers used for the repeaters on radios. But when did and you I'm do sorry, the LOS I believe that you're talking that about? This was all on the old McKinley tank, and we've moved them to the new McKinley tank, when if was I remember that? parts of them. Well, this goes back about three years now that the new tank okay. is in progress. If, if and when we put that, that park together, right. Chief, when we put the park together, there were cameras that were used to focus in on that. Right. And they were going back to the city. They still do. Now, they, well, <laughs> not always. Who said? Uh, uh, I, listen, I sat in on meetings yeah. at, at, at the HCA okay. and asked our director specifically, yeah. and there were times that he said, no, the cameras are not working. I asked specifically about Little League, are the cameras working up there? And time and time again, I got the answer, no. You're correct about Little League, and Little League was a thorn in Little League's side and yes. the company's side because they couldn't fix the problem. The problem was that there's no way of identifying Whose problem is it? Is it the owner of the cameras? Is it? Well, but how do you do that? How does who do it? Remember, there was a lightning strike yeah. that caused those problems. Right. Okay, it wasn't just that the cameras went kaput. There was a lightning yeah. strike. But and it was a question as to whether, whose responsibility due to, the, due to an act of God, who was responsible for fixing those cameras? But you know what, I, here's what one you, of the things that what? I need to Council know then with the new sure. cameras that you have to answer for me right now. Sure. And I've got a few other questions to go along with this. Act of God or not, there's got to be a guarantee with this. I want to know that Sorry, something I, I is going to happen to these cameras, you. they're going to get fixed. Could you repeat I want that? these cameras, Councilman. I want these cameras working uh, so that, that we can at least know what's happening with them. I missed what you said in the beginning. Could you he said it was the, there was a lightning strike on. No, uh, what you said. I heard him. I didn't hear what you started with the. I said I don't care if God there's a not. lightning strike. Right. I don't care what there is. Sure. If there is a problem with them, there's got to be a guarantee someplace that these things are going to work, and or we, as the the carrier of them and the per- right. or the seller of them, are going to stand mm-hmm. behind it. Can't argue with you. And now. I can't point my finger at anybody because this system allows the city to be in control of the whole problem, whereas the old system didn't allow that. We didn't own the cameras, and there's no way for us to go fix them. Everybody from the old system was afforded the opportunity to purchase their own video recorders on their end, and they would know if their cameras were working or not. And if they looked at their little computer screen one day and saw that their camera was out, they could have called their service technician to come fix their camera, and they would have known that. Whether or not the camera was transmitting back to City Hall, they all had the ability to record their camera 
immediately right there at their business. Some chose to do that, others did not. The issue became with the camera system, is it, up to, is it my responsibility to notify you when something that you have isn't working? Do I, so then we started to call the company and I was calling the company one time at the start of every shift, three times a day in a 24 hour period, we were notifying the camera company of the cameras that were out. We would call his emergency number, we would always leave a voicemail message because no one ever answered the phone, and we got to the point where the individual who owns the company expressed to the police department, don't call, this is for customers, for emergencies, and we can't fix these cameras because you don't have money to pay. And so, Chief, this will be different this time. Absolutely. I, I, I can, I can tell you right now. somebody that you can call directly and say, I want these fixed, fix them. Well, here, yes, and here's why we've done that, because when we put this RFP out, part of it is now, the city is now absent an, an electrical tech with Mr. Clatch having retired. But th once these cameras are up there, I don't want to dumb it down, but I could bring it down to my level where they're plug and play. I can go up a pole in a bucket truck if I have that capability yeah. and take a camera off and put a new camera up and or replace a transmitter. And so the city is going to be able to use city workers to do that work instead of having to spend $140 an hour to call a technician here from another company to do that. So a lot of the work we'll be able to do simply because we have the capability. And we have a okay, bucket two, truck. Right. Two other questions that I've got, uh, one for you really and one for Fallon. Um, and, and, and that is, uh, and I still don't understand why, if we're, if we're gonna put them on public streets, okay? It is still my belief that if it's covering a public a street, a public sidewalk, a public anything, I encourage you, put them back and send them to those recorders in City Hall all that you want to. But I still would like to see those cameras also uh, feed on out to the internet so that every single crime watch group here sure, it's a great can watch idea. that and, and Except. There, it, it takes, right. it takes yeah. uh, just for the record here, it takes a lot less of the, the, the danger away. Yeah. It takes a lot more of the curiosity. There are elderly people, there are uh, invalid people, there are all kinds of people here who would have some time We've had volunteers already. Right. Well, you know what? They're not going to let you in City Hall yeah. because even a police officer had to be on duty in Wilkes-Barre. I remember that very vividly watching that Here's the one on part television. The, but the if issue we put them on that. the internet, yeah, you, you know can't what, do that, though. Chief? I think we would. Let nobody me explain knows why. where the eyes yeah. then are watching. Here, here's the here's the eyes that you do know that are studying though, the criminals, and what you don't want to do is released to the public, not some of the public, all of the public, in an uncontrolled environment, the ability for criminals to watch cameras and find dead spots, or see where I can go, where can I stand on Alter and 2nd Street, or on Alter and 3rd Street, or on 15th and Alter Street, or on Wyoming and Green Street, where can I stand that I'm not in the eyes of the camera? So for as much plus as there is to having a thousand eyes watch them all the time, there's as many minuses. So I'm not for or against it. It's just a question that is going to have to be thought out when we get into a think tank to say, okay, we're to the point now, we're ready to switch, to flip the switch. How do we want to release this? Okay, that much, and, and I understand and I appreciate that. I still will probably fight to get them on the, the internet. Yeah, but I'm one, not arguing. One, and, and here's one last thing then, and Fallon, this is for you. Uh, and we, we were talking about what we could do. Uh, excuse me, I thought that, that, that the money that was used the last time on these police tours was for uh, uh, Broad Street to Holly Street. And that was where the tours of the extra police officers were going to be used. Uh, that was the understanding at that time. Now uh, you, you said that it's, it was really just overtime uh, that it was used for. L let me ask you, when was the last time the city had a a thorough investigation of what's low income and not low income in the city of Hazleton. I would have
have to check my books, but what I have, I go according to the census from 2000. There's 2004 results that I have. And 2004. That from, from, yeah, and that is deemed, the city was deemed 58% low mod. I would venture a guess right now, if you were to do a study all over again, and I know that doesn't come cheap. Mm -hmm. That That's doesn't the come issue, cheap. Yes. That's CD money of its own. Mm -hmm. But right now in the city of Hazleton, that would cover James Street. That would cover all these other streets that, that we're talking about. And I think we, I think that's money well spent if we do a new, on a new study of CD mm -hmm. and see what is low income within the city of Hazleton. We can go a lot further. We could be getting more money. We could be doing many more things if, in fact, we had that. So. I would encourage to look into, you and, and the administration now, to get into that. Why would they use the 2010 that. census? Why would they use the four? Uh, four would be the last time you got information. Yes, like that 2002, was. 2002 and then disseminates by 2000. Yeah. Exactly. Everything that is documented, you know, from um, HUD is from 2004. That's just what I've been going by. I've been told by my HUD rep to continue using that until new information is released. Please check into that on Absolutely. a regular basis because if not, I think we're hurting the city. Yeah, thank you. And you know, thank you. you. And this is why we want you to ask questions. So thank you so much. Any other questions uh, for Fallon or the chief? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions on the ordinance? <coughs> Roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next, uh, resolutions, non new businesses, ordinance, ordinance 2014 6, an ordinance regulation of customer parking only, patient parking only, patient loading, unloading only, loading zone signs, and any other related signs. I'll I'll make a motion to table it. Present it first. No, she made a motion to table. Oh, they have to present it before you can. Oh, okay, you have to. Wanna... No, that's fine. Uh, can we second it? You want to discuss it? We can discuss it. We can discuss it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you could. Uh, you could present it. Yeah, we, could just remove it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Jeannie presented it, and uh, Jeff seconded it okay. on the question. Go ahead. I I just would like to try to get something out there to help some of the small business owners, you know, rec reclaim some of the spots where they could uh, generate more business from. Okay, but I understand we're gonna, there's gonna be some revisions to it. We're gonna make some revisions. I came across Maybe. some information. Okay, and then we'll just today. talk about it at the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, now make a motion, make a motion, make a to, motion table? to table it. Table? I'll Wait second. A second. Okay, on the motion to table. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday? Yes. Next, uh, resolutions, resolution 2014-48, a resolution authorizing the city of Hazleton to apply for a Keystone Communities Planning Grant with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, DCED. I'll present. Second. On the question? Uh, On the question. Uh, I think think there was an interesting question before. Where does the where does the additional money as the backup come up for this? And yeah. maybe Fallon, you, Fallon. It's Fallon. Does this Krista, come under? Krista, right, Krista, why don't you and Fallon come on up together and maybe help explain this? It's just, it's Are you okay? Okay, no no problem. Hi, Krista. Hi. Uh, this is actually. Put your, state your name, Krista. Uh, my name is Krista Schneider. And your um, title? the Executive Director of the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress. Thank, Thank you. Uh, this is actually uh, a revision to the original amendment that was passed back in February, I believe. Uh, when that resolution was passed, there was language in there that the Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress would guarantee the matching funds for the planning study for the uh, Downtown Hazleton Revitalization Plan. And that's because we are guaranteeing the money for the match for the planning study, which is a $25,000 request. Uh, and that language we put in there specifically so that you knew we had the money and the city would not be obligated for any funds. Um, and that was passed. The uh, 
our regional office up in Wilkes-Barre, reviewed it, approved it, and sent it down to Harrisburg, and Harrisburg said that because the city is the official applicant, that language actually technically cannot be in there. So nothing has changed. In fact, they've, uh, they've verbally awarded the grant. Uh, the grant has been approved um, pending a revision of the resolution language to state that the city of Hazleton has to guarantee the matching funds, although our, the letter uh, guaranteeing the funds, the matching funds from the alliance still stands. And we still have the funds to match that grant. It's just that the language has to be, um, the resolution has to technically be revised to uh, submit it to Harrisburg so that they can release the funds. Okay. Is the study going to entail downtown or any other areas of the city? It's, or? The, it's for the downtown. It stretches uh, the, the planning area right now, uh, and this could change, but uh, preliminary study area stretches from uh, the shopping center on Broad Street to Poplar, uh, and then up to Holly Street on Wyoming, south to Chestnut Street. Uh, and that encompasses mostly, actually more than the central business district. So it's a central business district plus some outlying areas that still have some commercial activity. And then Wyoming Street? Wyoming, Wyoming Street right up to, to Holly. Right to Holly. Yeah, and, and, and maybe further, but that's the preliminary study area for right now, the consultants. That's your business area. What's that? That's your business area. Yeah, right. it's, it's more than the central business district, right. but it extends uh, contiguous areas. Are you gonna put an RFP out or? It's already been out. Uh, we've interviewed consultants and we've actually uh, selected a consultant pending you know, the, the award of this grant to um, contract with them. Can you yeah. tell us who the consultant is, or you would, would you We want to wait till they're under contract. Okay, wait till, okay, that's all right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to discuss it with you. Yeah, later, okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Christine. Uh, no other questions, we'll roll call. Bast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Monday. Yes. Next, the resolution on 2014-49, a resolution authorizing the city of Hazleton to join with other municipalities as a member of the Pennsylvania Municipal Health Insurance Cooperative to enter into an intergovernmental agreement for the purpose of joining the PA, PMHIC and to participate as a member of the PMHIC. Three seconds. I'll second. On the question? But you guys are here from, it was, it was everything okay? You, the city's fine, everybody's fine, the mayor's fine. We want to give just a brief <coughs> explanation that nothing's changing. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> it's always good for the morale. I'll, I'll try to narrow it down in 30 seconds or less. My name's Joe Pilla uh, and Denise Wolf. We're, we're with ETA Benefits, representing Benicon, the administrators of the program. Uh, the program goes into effect May 1st. There's no change in Blue Cross benefits to the employees. We've met with several union leadership members to review the plan. We've extended our uh, services and our availability to further educate the city employees at any time moving forward. Uh, the anticipated savings that we hope we can deliver when I hear a lot about uh, financial concerns is our minimum expected savings is $62,000 by the end of the nine-month contract. That's the minimum expected savings. The expected, which our actuaries have been highly accurate with their expected number, is $248,000 at the end of the nine-month contract. Instead of sending Blue Cross money in a suitcase every month, as a fully insured premium, we're basically only gonna send them enough money to cover the administration of the claims and the stop loss insurance, and then we're gonna pay the claims as we go. So there's an anticipated savings there at the end of, end of the year. And uh, Joe, everybody was on board, the unions, everybody was happy. Uh, did you yeah. talk to uh, our new administrator, uh, Mr. Pavula? He was at the meeting. He, he was at the meeting. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I think he just had a couple questions about the signing of contracts. I don't really, we didn't get any further feedback from him, but. Um, yeah, he was concerned. He 
just wanted to make sure council approved the resolution. Oh, so okay. Just sign the uh, uh, agreement. Okay, and, and Nancy Doyle, she's all mm -hmm. on board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Roll call. Fast? Yes. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next on the agenda is resolution 2014 50, directing the mayor to sign an agreement with the Hazleton City Council's legal advisor. Present. Second. On the question? Yeah, I have an issue. Um, every once in a while, we used to have amendments, uh, amended agendas. Now it seems like every every time we have a meeting, there's two and three ad advised agendas where resolutions, ordinances get put on the day of the the meeting. And it was always an issue for you guys. Now, let's just keep doing it over and over again. So I'm gonna make a motion to table this. So instead of blindsiding everybody with these things the day of the meeting, that we have the two weeks, that people know what's going on. So I make a motion to table this. No second, the motion dies. It's back on the table. Any other questions? No. I will, I will still stand with what I said before that. Okay. Obviously he's not here and um, I don't know where he is now and um, that this is not legal. Okay. Uh, Any I'd other like questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Lisa was on vacation for Holy Thursday, and City Hall was closed up until Monday. All right. And that's one of the reasons it was on the agenda. And we were waiting to hear from uh, our, our city solicitor, Chris Lesser, on uh, some certain things that were asked, which we haven't heard. Um, the legal advisor has not had his contract signed, which council passed. So this is why it is on the agenda right now, in case there's any questions. Well, it's not it. just this meeting, Gene, it's every meeting. Okay, okay, any other questions? Roll call. Bast? Yes, or, I'm sorry, no. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. Next, the resolution on 2014-51, directing the mayor to sign an agreement contract with the engineering firm of Barry Isett and Associates for the Office of Community Development. Present. Second. On the question? I'll make another motion to table. No second, motion dies. Fallon, uh, I have a question. I mean, we appointed Barry at, at, a, at a previous meeting, but they're not on board doing anything because we don't have a contract with them? And, and that's because the mayor hasn't signed. Okay, so it's his fault. So it's his fault that they're not working for us. They have been doing some things to keep everything, you know, our projects current, but I don't have a contract. Okay, okay thank you. Okay, thank you, that's all we needed. Any other questions? I, I, are, ahead, are, are, we, are we in jeopardy of losing anything by the engineer not being signed? Go ahead, Fallon, you can answer that. I know you're not, you're not legal, but maybe in your experience, maybe you, maybe you could answer that. At this time, I would say right now, no, but I mean, but you would definitely it, have to gets consult further, a legal advisor for this. So if it gets any further, it could be a, bi a big problem. Down the road, yeah. I mean, my projects are at a standstill, but I would definitely contact a legal advisor before I would. Did you and the mayor discuss this at all, or did you, did he say anything to you why he's no. not signing it, or? No, there was no discussion. Okay, okay, he hasn't talked to you about it or filled you in on anything? N no. Is there a reason why he's not signing it? I don't know. Is it because we voted for it? <laughs> I don't know, I can't answer why someone isn't signing anything that's okay. you know, up to them. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So, any other questions, Jeff? Not sure. Okay, roll call. Bast? No. Cassatt? Yes. Mope? Yes. Sosar? Yes. Mundy? Yes. 
That's it uh, for our resolutions, uh, comments from the audience. I just want to know, do we have a budget yet? That's what we want to know. Pardon? Uh, that's, uh, that's what we want to know. That's a good question. Uh, but what, under what circumstances does a, a city shut down? Because if our city of Hazleton shuts down, that means we don't have any policemen on the corner to fight the criminals. We don't have firemen to save us from fires. They have to work, Sylvia. Huh? The, the, those departments have to work. They do? I, they? I, uh, Sylvia, I, you know, that, I mean, the mayor could do whatever he wants. Obviously, he could shut the city down. I don't think he would do that, though. But, I mean, is uh, it up to him if it shuts down? But they had to go hmm? out. Is it up no. to him if it, if it shuts down? Thank you. Is it up to the mayor? Yeah. Well, I think the mayor makes a lot of decisions, and he probably could shut the city down by not paying anybody. Oh, boy. But I think there's a better answer to that, but your answer would have to come from some empty chairs over there right now. Yeah, I'm so always, unfortunately, I'm burned up by we're, 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 the table you know, empty. Sylvia, we can't really answer that any further than we have. Okay. Uh, let, let the empty chairs answer it. Let me say, Sylvia, we've, we've tried. We have tried. We've met. We've, we've tried to come to a compromise. Who wants to go? Go ahead. If we don't have a budget and the firemen don't work, I'm a Red Cross volunteer for three years now. If we don't get the call from the fire chief to say we're needed, how do we help the people that are affected when their homes are burning? Well, they're still operating. It's just we don't have uh, a budget in place that the, the mayor is, is following. He's just uh, going on his, on his own budget, on what he thinks. So the city's still operating, and, and I'm sure you'll, yes, you'll get a call. OK. Don't get worried. Yeah. It's not that we're not operating. Good. Legally is the question. All right, uh, I still didn't get the uh, answer to my question about, did the uh, redevelopment authority be oh, yeah, on March 6th? That. I forgot to ask that. Could you check and get back to me with that? Could you get, okay. get back to me with that, All right. please? Or get back to Lisa. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would like to first thank uh, the chief for McKinley Street. I wasn't here at the last meeting for uh, using Act 90 to uh, finally clear that, or to go after that landlord, to go out, clear that property. Uh, I hope we could use Act 90 before there's a hazard instead of while there's a hazard still laying on the ground for about a year. And uh, also, uh, I couldn't help but hearing the chief saying about the 15, you know, about 15 times we didn't, we don't have enough police. I sent him, you know, this was about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I think I was standing in front of you guys, uh, in front of the council, saying about uh, a state statute allowing for an auxiliary police to be established by a council, and it would be under the auspices of the chief of police, just like the regular police would, they would have the same training, the same uh, purview of the police, regular police department. But oh, I was different. under the impression that, you know, maybe that something would be done about that. So here's the statute. And I was hoping that the solicitor was here. Um, it is Act 561 of 1952, providing for auxiliary police. Uh, it is providing for supplementing the police forces of cities, boroughs, towns, and townships for the appointment, powers, and control of auxiliary police therein, and for the transfer during the disasters and emergencies of such auxiliary police members of the regular police forces and police equipment thereof. So I think that, you know, if the chief needs more cops and you know the city can't uh, afford to have full-time police then I think that uh, this would supersede the contract with the FOP because state law 
supersedes any kind of common contract with any police union. That's just my take. And uh, also with respect to the um, blighted properties, I've been, as you know, doing research on blighted properties for probably over, actually over a year. And uh, last year, about 16% of Hazleton homes are vacant. This is according to the US Census, okay? Now, that, rate, that number is about 1,881 properties in Hazleton that are vacant. So that means that they are basically targets. They are tinder boxes and they are also ticking time bombs, okay? And we saw for the past, let's say three years or more, that there have been arsons every summer, okay? So that being said, um, I was wondering, like I said last, for the last few meetings, why hasn't there been a blighted properties, blighted slash vacant properties committee, review committee established as under the uh, 113 uh, of Act 113 of 2002, the urban redevelopment law under section 12.1b, such power on any part of any redevelopment authority shall be conditioned upon the creation of ex or existence of a vacant blighted property review committee by ordinance of the governing body of the municipality. The com committee shall be made up of the members as determined in said ordinance, but shall include at least one member of the governing body, which is council, a representative of the redevelopment <coughs> authority, a representative of the appropriate planning commission, and a representative to be designated by the chief executive officer or officers from the executive branch of the government of the municipality, which is the mayor would appoint. Uh, which the ordinance can also be found under Chapter 73 of the City Code, which is titled Vacant Property Review Committee. So, and I would like to ask, formally ask the administration and council to reenact or, and reappoint, I understand, the Vacant Slash Blighted Properties Review Committee as directed under urban redevelopment law. And I would also request that council amend the chronic nuisance properties ordinance to include the nuisance abatement provision section 2702 to section 2712 allowed for in Act 22 of 2014, which is the reenacted third class city code, which takes effect on May 18th. So I was thinking that maybe council could and along with the help of the solicitor. We're going to direct, we're going to direct the mayor to, 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 Mark, to that, do that. That's our problem. The mayor has but to. We're, we're, going to, we're going to get on his back about the blighted. Uh, okay, okay, and I would also add one more thing, one last thing. Uh, for to amend the, you know, rental, proper, rental inspection ordinance, because under the reenacted third class city code, it allows for a real estate registry, which Berwick even has, and it allows, it, they went to court and it found that the borough was allowed to have that, and I, I will send that to you. Um, and also, as far as the amended amendment to the real estate uh, inspection, uh, the ordinance, uh, I would ask that all vacant properties, all owners of vacant properties, not f for people who are, have primary homeowners or rental properties that are occupied, just the vacant ones, that they be ordered, that be, they be required, excuse me, to get a vacant property slash dwelling policy, okay? Now this would enable the city to recoup any costs in the event of a disaster regarding a vacant property, with, whether it's criminal mischief, whether it's a uh, arson, or whether it's a gas line explosion that happened in Pottsville. So, and that's why I wanna conclude that Pottsville, the reason they are uh, after blighted properties is because of a tragedy that happened with a, a mother and three children that died from a from a explo explosion, okay. 
So Pottsville doesn't see blighted properties as eyesores or vacant properties as eyesores. And Johnstown, Pennsylvania, once had a population of 60,000 people back in, in the 1950s. Now it has a population of 20,000 people, and it is known as the city of abandonment. Do we want Hazleton to end up that way? The city of abandonment? Or do we want to take care of this issue as serious as it is? It's not only a crime issue, it's an economic issue because it's draining the city's resources. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Hey, my name is Melody Fuller, and I own Hair of the Dog in downtown Hazleton. And uh, for over a year now, we've had a problem with uh, the garbage in downtown. And we are a business district, a downtown business district. And yet, because there are um, some rental properties above the, uh, above the businesses, yeah, they're allowed to throw this. their garbage out on the street. And now that we have suffered through two years of the downtown uh, corridor project, which I am very grateful for, and the town looks fantastic. But it did, we did suffer, all of us business owners have suffered financially because of it, and we stuck through it so that we can hope that this year things will uh, become better. And that's what we have to live with. And that doesn't look good at all. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is this out like all week long, or is this just out? Tuesday and Wednesday. And if it's nasty out and the wind's blowing, it can blow. That's down uh, below Jimmy's, below that barber shop, and that can blow all the way up uh, to my business and in front of shop too. And I'm out there picking up someone else's garbage. We we do it all the time. One of the problems we talked about at the last meeting or the meeting before was recyclable containers possibly a different type with a lid because that contributes to a massive amount well, of garbage. Well, as having downtown businesses, we have dumpsters behind, back in the alley, so our garbage is hidden and it's not out there, and yet right. you have garbage pickup for, and it seems to be especially on our block, and I think something should be done about it. You should create an ordinance for it and have them put their garbage in the back just like all of us. They, and the garbage men themselves should not be picking it up in, in downtown. You have a new, new nice city, and this is putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, I agree. Uh, do they know, was anybody, did anybody contact this business that they should have it out on the back? I have, you know, is, I have sent. contact code to, to let them know? Do you know? Well, I'd like to know why, why code and health have, have walked past this and gone into Jimmy's to get a hot dog and not noticed it. When I don't happen to be either of those types of officers and I know that this is a violation. And nothing's been done. And this has been going on, like I said, for over a year. It's been, and, and I think that we're more aware of it now that the city does look nicer with the sidewalks and stuff. It really becomes glaringly apparent. And I have sent pictures to Donna Palermo from the chamber and uh, to Billy Spears. And, and everyone has been wonderful. Don't think, you know, I'm not complaining about them. Everybody, everybody's been wonderful about it. Last week they told me to talk to Frank about it. And, yeah. And, uh, up with me if you want <laughs> and I, I, don't know and I took pic an I took pictures tonight and and uh, tonight's pictures is completely completely all over the street it, it's disgusting and it's and it's wrong and last week I went to the mayor's office and I asked him about it and I'm going to just show you this here's what she's talking about. I, saw this. We, I, we shared I this think that there are together. some things that we can and should do. Number one, it, the code enforcement uh, needs to get involved in this. The health needs to get involved in this. And the authority needs to get, Hazleton City Authority picking up that garbage needs to get involved in this. In, in the I summertime, know, there's maggots and, and, and rats and everything. This is unacceptable. And, 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 unacceptable. It's, it's, I, I, and, and it smears the good reputation of the city. Right. Here's, here's my suggestion. An ordinance to make you know, them get it in the back. And the problem is when you back. look at these pictures, the saddest part about it is they're in compliance with the ordinance. Yeah. They're in containers or the bags are tied closed. Right. And the problem that we have is, as was just stated, 
we've just spent how many dollars on beautifying the downtown and it sticks out. The only suggestion I have to stop this from being in the downtown beautification corridor project is to create the ordinance that says it has to be put in the alley and has to be picked up the in the alley. Side of the now, do, do they have the, the other problem that we have is, is teeth in an ordinance where huh? some of these apartments on the second floor decide instead of making the trip down to the first floor, they're going to air mail their garbage, just open a window and drop it out, and where it goes, it goes. For you, they do it in my neighborhood. The problem the with that is I'll be there tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., as promised, and I will go through people's garbage. The, the problem that we have is someone saying, I put my garbage out properly last night. I have no idea who tore the bag, who threw the bag, or whatever. Well, but, but, Chief, that may be true, but it, I, I would take issue with that because there's no front door right now here that I see these people really being able to come on out. They That's need to be going on out to Mine Street, which would be their back street, and Mine Street would be able to handle that garbage because it handles a lot of other garbage. I can't and tell you what their address is or which on picture. Mine Street? Um, th this is... Yeah, this is Bruce Broad Alley. Street. Bruce well, Alley. I know that's Broad Street, but they should be coming out the back door. This would be and Spruce Alley. they should Alley. be putting their garbage Spruce out Alley. on Mine Street. Right. Yeah, Spruce, Spruce Alley. Alley. Spruce, Spruce Alley, well, then, whatever. But, but, yeah. but, yeah. but that side. should be going there. The and that should the be the place too. where they're picking it up. I can't yeah. argue with you, except I don't know what their address is. And if their address is 128 Broad Street, then they'd be putting it on Broad Street. I think it's as simple as, first of all, Here's, here's where I believe that we could easily solve this issue for downtown. There is no mistaking, if I put my garbage out in front of 128 and it ends up down in front of 122, I can say, I didn't put it there. There's no way that your garbage is going to end up on Broad Street if you were supposed to put it in Spruce Alley. So immediately, if we don't allow garbage on Broad Street, it has to be put on Mine Street or Spruce Alley. When I walk down Broad Street, if I see cans and bags, now I could say, your garbage is not supposed to be here, and there's no way around it. The right easiest, now, it's, yeah. it's more of a The loophole. easiest way is just to amend the ordinance. Right. Just yeah. put the, For, make them put the garbage yeah. on Mine Street and Spruce Alley. And That's then we can deal with if it shows up on Broad Street, and then we try to attack the issue of, okay, now who's dropping it out a window? But, but I think the immediate thing is, that the Broad Street Corridor looks so beautiful and we've all waited for so long that the easiest thing for us to do immediately is stop allowing people to put garbage on Broad Street. I don't think that's hard. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and and I, do, I do on have Broad one Street other well. question that goes with, the, the, with all the garbage in front of, you know, right down from Jimmy's there. And this is what I asked the chief the other day. Uh, there is occupancy permits in Hazleton, and this is every week. And, and that much garbage will fill a whole dumpster. So how many people are living in that apartment? I don't know if it's a two, if it's an apartment on both sides. You, you don't know. Well, we've got apartments yeah. above above my sure. shop, and we don't generate that much garbage. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. And we also have homes on, on Broad Street, too. So that's a question that's being asked across town. Right. Yeah. To decide which section no garbage on Broad Street and which section starts the garbage on Broad Street. I, I agree. I mean, if you have a downtown merchant area, that should yeah. not be yeah, garbage out there. I agree. I agree. There's, sure. There's I mean, even if you decide to go from Cedar Street to Broad Street, I mean, or Cedar I'm Street to Diamond Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. You know? And the you Diamond stop Avenue. when you go past Cedar Street. I, I, somewhere I think we can solve that rather quickly. I have quickly. another thing to say, too. I mean, the, you're right, the downtown Broad Street. But when I looked at the sidewalks, okay, up towards the Hazleton Shopping Center, the garbage that's blown, and all the, the stones from the winter, they don't sweep. I mean, we put beautiful sidewalks in, and, and they're loaded with those winter stones. People have to... If it's, even if it's a shopping center, they have to maintain the property. Mm -hmm. Who picks up the garbage on there? Hmm? Is there a route there for the garbage men to pick up the garbage? What's that, sir? Who picks up the garbage on Broad? Well, well it's the, the water we have a contract. Uh, there's a mascara. The city has a contract through the water authority. Obviously, they do if this is out there. <laughs> they do. But maybe we should maybe we should talk to them too and try and get them 
from not, not picking up on Broad Street, the, it sh the, the garbage shouldn't be on Broad Street. But the people have to be <coughs> notified yeah. because yeah. we right. just can't go out and find them if they're not aware of the right. fact that it's getting changed. Another thing, in fairness to Mascaro, if we're going to make them drive Spruce Alley and we're going to make them drive um, that area to pick up garbage, then we're going to have to consider regulating parking, parking on that side yeah, of an alley. We would. That's Wednesday a, morning. That's a thin alley and it's a big no truck. Right. Yeah, hmm? I don't think there's any parking. No. There's, there's no, no. There is no parking because there's no way to park. There's it's more there's like people that park. There's got to be there's solutions people that park to this that alley. we can work on together. Yeah. Let's just hang aside. Uh, we know what the problem right. is now. Give yep. us a few. Yeah. We'll, a few, we'll have you know, uh, we'll, a little we'll bit of time to work we'll on it. it. I'm I sure think we this can is solve. easily solved. This specific yeah. Broad Street yeah. portion, I, I think this is. Yeah. This is solvable. Just just check it out with. Thank you. The the width of the alleys, either whether they're mine or spruce, that they have, they have the ability to get down them. Right. Well, then the issue has become, although we all believe that you can't park in an alley, the fact of the matter is, over the last 10 years, alleys and courts have become much more parked in, to the point where when we tow cars out of alleys in the wintertime for the snow ban, people are upset because they don't think there's any parking rules for an alley or a court. I can't park on the snowband side of the street, but <coughs> why do, who cares if I block the alley? So I think that we just want to be cognizant of that and possibly put some signs up for the area that we do so that there's no confusion when I have to tow a car Wednesday morning because Mascaro couldn't get through to pick up the garbage. Chief, couldn't you put up like a, a portable camera like in a, in a truck or something and park it there and just see who's... Who's putting out all that garbage? Yeah. Well, but the fact is, putting out the garbage isn't a violation. Well, we're going to find out who's when putting. I, yeah. When who's I took putting that eight, picture, who's putting yeah. 18 garbage bags. When I took that picture, they guy. threw a camper out it's the either, window at it's me. It's either that, or they only put their garbage out once a month. No, that's every week. No, yep. again, get, I, I, this I mean, is this is some, a solvable these issue. These could be from some businesses too. Just give us time to work you know, on down it, the and, road. And, and, and we will take care of this. I agree. I appreciate Thank you. it. Thank, Thank, you you for Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Th Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Any other comments? D. D. Dekas Hazelton. Uh, it was interesting. You brought up the redevelopment. And a lot of times, I know I like attending the meeting, but I don't always read the legal notices. Is there any reason why we don't post the planning, the uh, zoning, and the redevelopment on our website? I, I'm, I want them all. I want everything on the website. I want the and what party. the agendas are? I'm, uh, I'm going to direct all of these agencies to start being up to date, putting their minutes on. We have to be open. We have to be accessible. It should be on the internet. Other cities do it. Right, but I'm talking about ones that belong to the city. Yeah. And those three do belong to the city. The other issue was, it was interesting about the cameras that are along the Broad Street Corridor. I have a question. Are they being uh, saved on a tape that if there's an accident, they can go back and see uh, who was at fault? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're, well, Chief, the, uh, how long do they keep them or? What's, right now, yeah, what, I, don't, I don't think they're monitored for that. Okay. You, you said about the cameras on the Broad right. Street Corridor. Yeah. Is, are they being recorded for a time period before they're... I have no idea. They're, they're, they're not on our network. They're pen dots. That's they're pen, pen dots. I, I know, but right. if, can we find out if pen dot records it? Because I constantly see cars see, going through red There lines. was an article in the paper Perfect. not you, too long you, ago. They only monitor motion, okay? Am I correct no, that's what they were doing was motion? Like no, if an emergency that's not correct. field was coming through, they can push a button to let them know that the ambulance was That's the not fire. the cameras. The, our, our vehicles have that right now where there's a, a traffic interrupter, but it has nothing to do with the camera. That's just a transceiver that picks up the signal from our traffic interrupter on our light bar and cycles the light to be green in our direction. But they said that the can't. there was something in there that they said the cameras aren't actually recording for say vehicles, you know. Some cameras only record motion and change yeah. to save bandwidth and so they're not always sending a signal first of all and to save recording time so they're not recording no change. Um, I, I would never want a camera for my department that only recorded motion because a lot of times the camera didn't pick up the slightest motion and you didn't get 
the video of the part that you needed. At the same time, with the PennDOT cameras, if and when we're able to tie those into our network, which I'm anticipating could be done anytime we actually have a new system up and running, they will record for as long as we decide we're going to keep something. Now, one of the things that I can't use, I can't turn them into red light cameras to mail you a citation, but I could turn them into, there was an accident, I go back and watch the tape, and now there's no question of who went through an intersection, what color was the light, where was the pedestrian. Um, you know, it, 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 they're phenomenal tools and they will be able to be recorded. I'm sure PennDOT records and, and them somewhere can, now. If you can let us know, and you know what, we're all kind of shooting in the dark here. If you can let us know uh, some, some information about time and recordability and all that of it for the we future. We can record them. That would be a help. I can tell you right now. That's fine. Yeah, there's no doubt. Okay. And time is only limited by the size, how much of a file do we want to keep, right. how much storage do we have. Okay. We could keep them recording indefinitely and never go away if we have an infinite hard drive system. Um, but uh, up to you know, 15 days yeah. is a lot of time. Right. You have to, you have to open that right. space. You need that. You and somewhere just... along the line, you're going to realize, wait a minute, if I didn't realize that an accident took place in 15 days, right. the chances are I'm never going to know. Right. right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Do they, Chief, do they record sound? I'm sorry. Are any of them recording sound or just? None of ours have the capability sound. of Although you can get systems that do now, that. Some in New York and Chicago do sound. But some of them become, it becomes such a legal issue of where were you recording sound, where weren't you, did you know you were recording sound, um, that I didn't want to go into the whole wiretap issue of was it an illegal tap or not. Okay, just video. Right. Okay, thanks. It just cracked, so it really got up and <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. Um, I just want to make an observation. There's a lot of people here, and they care about the city. What, there's a young man over there who's on junior council, and you, you usually hear every single time. He cares, because he's here. And then we have three seats over there that are empty, which to me says they don't. Even if they have a disagreement on the budget or anything, they should sit there. They should be there. They should want to make a resolution for the sake of the city. But apparently, they don't care. If it's not their way, they don't want to sit here. That young man over there cares, cares more about the city as, how old are you? He's 16 years old. He cares more about the city than somebody who was elected mayor because he's not here. And I don't care if he doesn't agree with you. I don't agree with all of you at times. It doesn't matter. I want what's right for the city. I want what's right for the community. I want what's right for my neighborhood. I don't want to see people move out. I want to see people move in. I want to see business grow in the city. Not as can do does outside of the city and we get no revenue. I want to see what's happening in the city. Those three gentlemen that should be there have proven right now, the last two meetings, not coming here, that they don't give a damn about us. I'm a taxpayer. I own my home. And I have no representation. I have nobody that wants to put a budget together. As far as the, the, the police and the fire department, yes, they will work without a budget. But you have to care. And, and that's the problem we have. We have three empty seats. We have no discussion. We have nobody to answer to. We, do, we can't even ask a question. So if the mayor doesn't show up at the next meeting, He's just, going to show, he's just going to show more and more to the people that he doesn't give a damn about the city. And that's sad. I agree with you, Judy. And, and right. the big problem is he's not sending the administrator here, too, or the solicitor. 
you could send both of them here. And that's, that's even a bigger problem than him not being here. Not Absolutely. Sending, uh, the solicitor or, uh, or the administrator is a, is a big problem. Absolutely, because it opens up the city to something that, you know. And, and you have questions. We have questions about how the city's run or, or anybody, you know. Tom, I know Tom would come. I know he'd come. To, I know he wanted to come to the meetings, just as Steve came to the meetings. That might have been the reason he got fired, because he came to our <laughs> meetings. But I know Tom, the administrator, would want to come to meetings. Like I said, not everybody. Okay. There's an old saying, Jesus sat at a table of 12 and couldn't satisfy all of them. Okay. Not everybody's going to be happy. Yeah. I understand that. And like I said, sometimes I, I agree, sometimes I don't agree from what you guys do. But I'm not going to like stamp my feet and go in the corner and, and say, I'm not going to play ball anymore. Like I said, that young man, he cares. Junior counsel, he cares. The people up here, the people that are in this audience, we care. Those three empty chairs, say a lot to us. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's all I got to say. Thank you. John Homer Hazleton. Uh, I know that you've got quite a bit going on right now. However, when you will get to the uh, issue about hiring a controller for uh, some proper checks and balances about the budgeting and all. I am in favor of it. Let's get it done. Thank you, John. We're working on it. Uh, and to uh, even I go a little bit further about what uh, Judy said. said. Joe Yunuzi doesn't want to do his job of caring for the city. Get out. You're right. You're right. Thank you, Thank John. You, John. Thank you. Dominic. Any other? Dominic. Dominic Tolerico Hazelton. Uh, I just have one question. Do you collectively agree with what she said? What she said? Judy. I think, yeah, they should be at the meetings. There's no question about it. So the majority of you do agree? We can't, no, uh, I agree with Judy, but we cannot make the mayor come. I want this, the, I absolutely want a solicitor and the administrator here and department heads. I would want them. I, the mayor, we can't, we can't force him. He's elected by the people. We can't force him to come to the meetings. What, what can you do about it, and what are you willing to do about it? Well, last year I, we tried to pass a resolution uh, getting them to, uh, saying they must attend the meetings. It got changed to May. Jimmy changed the, one of the words to may attend meetings and uh, I mean we, we could revisit that again and uh, maybe get the administrator and some of the department heads. I think that's something we have to talk about. Well, I'm, I'm trying to answer a common scenario that comes up in conversation when we talk about the city. You talk about the budget, you talk about things not getting signed, you, you talk about things not getting done, you talk about people not being here. My, I just would like a simple answer. What is your recourse as a le legislative branch, what can you do? Can you cut funding? Can you take legal action? We could, we could pass uh, an ordinance make, forcing the cub, and it's done before, it was done before, and it was legal, where they, they made, uh, yeah, resolution, they made the solicitor attend uh, uh, work sessions and the administrator. So it was passed before when Lockwood and uh, Tyrone were on. They passed the resolution, so we could do that again. Well, I'm not trying to we be. A, I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but what are you waiting for? Like, why hasn't it been done yet? We've done that. I've I've tried to pass a resolution last year about it, and as far as cutting funding, we we with our budget, you know, we we did that with our budget. We we, you know, he's ignoring our budget. I'm not specifically talking about the mayor, but what I'm saying is the solicitor is not here. And I have, had, I have a question that I would have liked to ask him today that applies to me personally. Maybe I can, maybe I can't, maybe I could ask you and he could answer it. But the thing is, if he's not here, none of that can happen for sure. Dominic, we're having the same issues that you are, trust me. Lisa sent something <clears throat> to our solicitor this week pertaining to the agenda. Was it a resolution? Was it an ordinance? She still didn't get a response. 
I, I, I've sent things, we're not getting responses. And now, you have to understand from what we're, our, our, our view of this is, the mayor is to the point where if they want to keep their job, they'll do as he says. They're between a rock and a hard place, okay? That, that's how I perceive it. I don't know if the I, rest of the council I does. understand that. What I'm trying to say is, rather than pretending we're going to reinvent the wheel, there's city code. There has to be provisions. This isn't the first time this has ever happened in the history of government. So what are those provisions? You have to understand one thing. Unfortunately, within the city of, uh, or within the state of Pennsylvania, there is no such thing as a mandatory referendum, nor is there a recall. The only way that you can create those is if you actually had a home rule charter. Not an optional plan, but if a you home develop rule a home rule charter. What the city got right now was, and it, let's put it pure and simple, they got a person who got less votes than, than putting the other votes of the two candidates that ran together. He doesn't even understand that. More people than not didn't want him as mayor than did. Let's be honest and let's tell the truth. Well, and you're stuck with them. That, you're stuck with them that, because that's the law. That being said, I am not talking about a particular mayor person, okay. a particular councilman person. I'm talking about the positions as they, not, not in a personal nature. What I'm saying is there's got to be something in place that if the administration is not acting according to the law or the legislative branch is not acting in according to the law, there's got to be recourse because if he's doing something he's not allowed to do, you can't just sit here and say he's not allowed to do that, but there's nothing we can do about it. I don't believe that to be that true. The things we can do, we are, we are going to pursue. We're Jeff, doing. We're talking about, we're, we're going to end up having to talk about legal action. Now, and we're, I can tell you one thing right now. When you talk about legal action, nobody is going to like it because it is going to cost you money. If you think that for, for one second that, that uh, 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 anybody at that table will take money out of their own pocket to defend themselves in a courtroom, I'm sorry, you got a bridge. I'd, I have a bridge, rather. I'd like to sell you. Now, people aren't going to like that, but that may very well be what ends up having to happen. Now, are you willing to accept that? I'm willing to accept losing that Anybody money versus, versus losing that? all the money that we've been losing by things continuing to carry on the way that they are. Exactly. Okay? That's one thing. But it's going to take. But the second what it's going to take. This is I'm telling you right now, legal action is going to be, have to be taken. Okay. Now, if you guys are willing to do it, we'll take him to court. And we'll force him to do whatever it is that has to be. But you've also got to understand that he is going to go fighting into the night. I got chastised. Now, let's, uh, we'll, we'll throw it out on the table because people have left here right now. I've been chastised before. I'm going to tell you right now what happened. And there were commercials on here that were put on television for uh, uh, my election that said, Dave Sosar cost this city $20,000. Dave Sosar took the city to court. Dave Sosar sued the city for $20,000. Dave Sosar did sue the city. He was one of five people. And you know who was the lead person on that? A gentleman by the name of who sat in that middle seat right there, John oh, Quigley. Yeah. John Quigley. I was one of five people. No, wait. You asked the question, now you're going to get an answer. I was part of that. We paid our own way. You know where the $20,000 came from? The city council took the money from the city treasury. And you want to know who it was, who was the president of the city council, the lead name on that court case? One, Joseph Yanuzi. Now, that's what you're in store for. So be ready, because he's going to take every single dollar that you guys have in the Treasury. Be ready. There was one last thing I wanted oh, to say, and, and it will fit perfectly with what you just said. You named three names there, specifically. What I'm saying is, along with what I just asked you to do with legal action, is create legislation so there's procedures in place common sense procedures in place, and things that any council member has to follow. So your name isn't attached to that action because that's the action that's specified to be taken. Then it's not personal. And who's sitting in that Everything seat is that not you personal. Everything you just said we'll have to go to a home rule charter for. 
strong because that we, we do not have those powers. We, we don't could have we could powers. put a, an ordinance or resolution saying they must attend, but the mayor could still tell them not to attend. It's not just about attending. What I'm saying is with anything, with with procedures, with everything, with the city, with code enforcement, with everything. That's the stuff that should be getting worked on, so that. There's, there's rules to follow, not people, because the you all are going to change. You're going to get elected and voted out, and somebody else is going to be sitting in your seat. And if we're relying on the in integrity of everybody it's that sits in the seat. everything it's wonderful that you're saying, but there are legal recourses that have to be taken. Right. I'm sorry, you can't just write a piece of legislation because it's just going to get thrown away. Do you realize how many things right now in this city are going on that are not being followed properly? No. Give me a break. Most of it. Most of it and, is not being And why do you think properly, we're in so much God's trouble, sake. Dominic? Because we've been holding their feet to the fire trying to make them follow the law. And we, and don't, don't, like and we don't get a lot of information that we should get from the city. It's like pulling teeth. We can't get, we can't get our contract signed, which means this is why we don't have a legal advisor here tonight. I understand that you are all telling me the same thing, that it's the administration that's holding you up with the budget, with everything. Let me ask you, do you have a legal opinion on the budget? Ask Chris Lesser. We've been asking one for I don't know how long. Well, why can't you get that from the city solicitor? Can you get him here or can't you? That's the bottom line question. Do you have the power to get him in the That question has been asked for two weeks. Okay. We cannot, you've got to understand, our hands get tied. You're yeah. talking about structure here. You want a structure? I'll give you a structure. There's home rule charter, there's optional plans. This is a game that's being played. I can't change those rules. The rules aren't fair, but he's playing a different set of rules, and unless you go after it legally, you're not going to have a chance to deal are with it. Are you committing to do that? That's all I can do. Are that's you going to do I that? We are going to do willing that. To do it. How we'll long do it. about will it take for you to do it? Probably we're in the process. Probably in the next meeting we'll have something together. So we'll be able to hear something yeah, at the next, at the meeting, next meeting as to a solution to the problem. At the next don't meeting. A, don't look for a quick solution. I'm not looking for a quick because solution. I just want to know what the solution the is and when it's going to happen. That's what I'm asking you. Our, our mayor doesn't understand how our government works. Our government works as council decides as far as the budget goes. The mayor presents his budget. We finalize that budget, decide how much is spent, what light items should be spent. We decide whether you should raise taxes or lower them. Us five, not the mayor. If he I, thinks he does that. If I don't understand the law and I break it, yeah. it doesn't matter if I understand it. So that's not really a reason that he could get away with doing it is what I'm saying to you. If he's doing something that you feel is wrong, which I'm not a legal advisor, so I can't say it is or it isn't, but then what action is going to be taken? How long is it going to be? Is it going to take you to do it? And when can we find out that that's going to start? Well, at the next meeting. Let me Thank say you. this. Everybody complains. <laughs> that's all I wanted to know. Okay. And at the next meeting, I can guarantee you, and if you ever go to court, you already know this. Dominic. There are going to be two me, sides two to minutes. a story. One lawyer is going to say one thing. One lawyer is going to say another. And when lawyers start to talk, guess who isn't allowed to talk anymore? So just be prepared, because that's what's going to happen. And Mr. Cassatt, my uh, chair just broke. Under our old form of government, when we were ruled oh, with third-class city code. <laughs> Listen. I, I think everybody in this room hey, is prepared for something to happen. Just listen. When we were under when okay. we were under the old form of government, Dominic, under third class <coughs> city code, all right, it was different. Oh. Now that we're under optional plan and it's supposedly strong mayor, he has control over the departments, all right? He he controls what they're doing. The only one we really can control is the administrator because we provide the duties that they're supposed to follow, and we are going to. I wanted to give Tom some time till he got in place, got comfortable with his position, see where he was going to stand. Was he going to come to council meetings like Steve Hahn? Steve got in trouble for it, but he came to council meetings. Or was he going to go with what the mayor was saying, no, don't attend the meetings, all right? This meeting showed me that he's not going to attend. We have some of these rules in place. Resolution 9652, and I brought it specifically for tonight. Whereas questions and issues frequently arise at meetings and work sessions of the Council of the City of Hazleton, which require information that is not readily available to members of Council, but which inform information is available to the Director of Administration, and whereas in past previous City Administrators have attended 
city council meetings and work sessions but the director of administration is not attending the meetings now therefore be it resolved by the council the city hazel ten that the director of administration is requested to be present at all work sessions and all meetings of council this was adopted on the fourteenth day of march nineteen ninety six the president was phil anders all right so i'm going to let him know that from this point on we expect him to attend the council meetings if nothing else if not even to help us for the public okay well he when he answered my question that's really what i was trying to to understand is when is we're gonna yeah do something about it. okay thanks so, Thank we know Thank everybody's you. anxious any other comments from the audience no no you could stay there john I know. Well, we're going to get to that, John. Thank you. We're going to get to that. Go ahead. I wasn't going to get up. By the way, Norman and Tarantino Hazel, but after hearing Dr. Sozar's comment, there's one question I have to ask. What do we have to do? When can we change? And when can we revamp the former government to make it more stronger and to correct some of these problems that were made when the first Home Rule Charter was drawn up for the city? You can do it right now. But the fact of the matter is, Norman, one of the things that you've got to understand is that these kind of things can happen in almost any structure of government that you've got. Uh, uh, it, it is really the people that get elected that, that make a government or break a government, okay? And, and, and I, I, let's be honest about it right now, and, and I've really been seriously thinking about this the last, uh, the last week in, in particular. And, and uh, I do hope the people of this town have learned uh, the mistakes that were made in the last election, uh, not for city council, I hope, but for for the 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 uh, mayor of this city. Uh, I'm, I'm, th 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 this has become this has become embarrassing. As I uh, noted, okay, and so it's it's structure is nice, structure can help, but but it's people that will still make the structure work. Any structure can work if you've got good people. As another doctor of uh, political science, do you believe that we need to fine tune the form of government we have in the city? I wrote the administrative code a long, long time ago. I know it's been altered a number of times, and I'm ready to alter it again right now. And, and, and in, in altering the administrative code, we can make the changes that need to be made. Uh, there, you know, there were things that were changed when it was first when it first came out. Uh, there are things that have been changed along the way, and we will change the things that need to be changed. The administrative code is not going to look like it did uh, uh, a few weeks ago when we're finished with it. Believe me, it will change, and whether people like it or they don't like it, they're going to follow it. Does that have to be voted on by the city uh, to? That's going to be by ordinance, and I think I think uh, I, I no I won't. No, I'm going to stop right now because I'm going to say something that I don't want to say. But I, 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 I think it'll change. I'm looking forward to it. I have a lot of respect for I'm doctor. looking forward Thank you. to it. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Any other comments from the audience? Go ahead, Teddy. Ted Sherrock, Hazelton. I, I wasn't going to stand up, and maybe I shouldn't, but. What's going to be what's going to come out in the paper with all of this going on the yes. tantrum of uh, arguing over the mayor the mayor is going to come out and say that he was at a retirement party for a very deserving lady tonight donna palermo and that that's why he wasn't here well well i mean I he want, might use that me excuse jack. tonight ted but he, he that that's not the reason he's let me not finish here. jack yeah i was at that party also and for a and very here. deserving, that's, that's uh, caring, caring person. I left there and went to a wake for a very dear friend and came in here 10 minutes late, and I've been here ever since. Thank you. So I don't want to hear in the paper that this guy wasn't here because he was at another affair. Yeah. Uh, just to, uh, and I wasn't going to say that. I'm going to stay out of it. I don't want to get in trouble, but, you know, th this is going on every, I've been coming to every meeting now for two years, and, 
and, and it's the same thing over and over and over uh, again. And it has we, we, and we've got to get, get on the wagon. We've got to do something. I'm going to jump in right now again. And unfortunately, you know what? And I apologize because I'm getting on a bandwagon tonight. And you know what? You never saw a little guy get more angry okay. than this. I'm Doc, telling you, you right now. Doc, the you simple fact of the matter you is. Need to do it more. The simple fact of the matter is that, that he doesn't want to be here because he doesn't want to get yelled at. He doesn't want to be called names. And you know what? The simple fact is, if you do your job, you don't have to worry about that. You know what? Sylvia didn't want to talk to me at the beginning of the meeting. I bet you she wants to talk to me now that I passed those darn <laughs> Alter Street Light cameras, don't you? But you know what? I'm a big boy. And if people like me or they don't like me, that's OK. I can live with that. I taught for 43 years. Tell me something I haven't been called yet. You know what? And if you can't take that, then get out of the kitchen, a very famous president used to say. That's the bottom line. And that's right. Thank you, Terry. Doctor, you, you need Thank to you. do that more. Because there's no one who knows more about government in this room than you do. Thank you. Uh, and I sat in many of your classes. And, and do you, it more. You have to understand, we get yelled at quite a bit from everybody. We have to play and make sure that we give everybody equal. You know, we treat everybody like your family. And, we, uh, and I said this to the magistrate the other day. I don't treat one child any different or better than another child. So while I'm looking out for your neighborhood, I still have to look out for the other ones as well that are needy and crying to me. So please understand. You're right. You're, right. You're only okay. as good as your leadership. <clears throat> OK, uh, and no other comments? Uh, comments from junior counsel? Oh, go ahead. You could come. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's about the trash that you're talking about. Go ahead. Uh, it's Just say, state your name, please. Adonna Plesh Hazelton. And I was looking for a cart that was stolen from our place. So I was going up and down the streets and looking, and there's a lot of trash inside the yards, like mattresses, toilets, broken things. Any, I think that would, if you could put a tag on each house and say, clean it up. And another thing, can you please do something about the prostitutes that are downtown? And I if, was just going to mention And if you that. think they haven't multiplied, <laughs> they have multiplied. Now they have pimps. And I, if I can notice them, then anybody can notice them. They have a oh. chain. Let they're, me, they're, let they me come say in. Chief, is the chief still here? Let me say that. I was going to address this to the chief at the end of the I meeting. Mean, Really? I called 911 on Saturday. I had gotten a call from Tommy Gabus from the Historical Society, See? and they were having an open house event. Now, they have trouble with the derelicts from the bar who hang around all day long. I told them it was not an emergency. I wasn't going to bother you because it was a holiday. And I asked for Tommy's sake if they would bring the patrols up. Now, I was there at a meeting one time uh, with David about two months ago or so, and we were told by one of the people that are on the board, she was not allowed to cross the other side of the street because the pimp told her it was his territory. Right. So there's a prostitution house going well, on there, they, uh, uh, Chief, and so please address it or, or a prostitution you know, house. They have, there, I'm there's pimps you. and prostitutes, and I, and I believe it's on the right across the street in that vicinity. They, ask, they come down the Ask Mr. Gabus no. from uh, the historical site. You know right where it is? <laughs> oh, yeah. They go prostitute. Yeah. I could tell you where they're standing. I know some of their names. They, they come in, they clean. <laughs> they come in with their makeup. They put it out. They fix their hair. They plug in their iPhones. They do all kinds of stuff. And the thing, the last time they did, they asked for money for customers and things like that. And we don't have high class ones. When I start looking better than them, we got a problem. That's all I got to say. Thank you for coming forward. I, I, I was going to bring that up privately to you, Chief, at the end of the meeting. But it, it sat, on the, no sat other, on the floor now. No other comments? Junior counsel? Junior counsel, would you like to make a comment? First of all, thank you, Judy. Um, I almost blushed. <laughs> um, these people here show me that they care. These people, so far, they're, um, uh, they're going to affect my life. They're, these people
people here are showing me what a true leader is. A leader is a, a servant, I'm sure we all know this. We're all, you're all wise. As a kid, I'm 16, and I want to take an example and be a, be a leader, and I can take an example from you. Last week, what we talked about was um, uh, how we're trying to get the youth to stay here and stuff. And earlier, um, one guy over there, I forgot, mentioned about uh, the abandoned city in PA. There was an abandoned city. And then when he said, Johnstown. Johnstown. Thank you. Um, yeah, he mentioned that things are supposed to be like that. I like this city, despite what other people think. I like this city. I don't need a place to entertain myself. I'm content with my family, my house, and the people here that get me. And I have to believe that the mayor ultimately is trying to run the city. It may, I'm being serious. Some of you may think the mayor's not doing anything. I don't know what the mayor's doing, and I don't, I don't want to say he's not doing anything because I don't know what's in the mayor's mind. So what I want to complete you with is, you know, Dr. Sosar, your comment, we need some leaders like that who are willing to do the right thing you know, when people badger them and, and kind of bad talk them and stuff, they'll be adults and put it to the side. I think we need more leaders like that, Dr. Sosar. That's all I got. Thank you, Junior Council. Thank you. Comments from uh, <laughs> Council, Keith? Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what kind of things that you're bringing to the next meeting um, that you guys are talking about. Uh, I have no idea what it is. I would sincerely appreciate if you at least give a few days notice when you change agendas, because if you don't get it until that day, it's a little bit more difficult. And it's, I know, Dave, you talked about suing the city, and I know that you lost, and it was about, about authority appointments. So I don't know, I don't know the, the reasons behind that. I was in high school at the time. Um, and I don't know what your plans are to sue the city at this time, the, the three or four of you, um, but hopefully it has some merit. And I know that it's lawyers that speak when it's when that comes about and it has nothing to do with what you think um to address the agenda with the controller the the controller in this city has to be elected because it was taken out when the form of government was formed that's the only way that it can get put in it cannot be put in by council we cannot appoint we cannot appoint someone it has to be brought up by the electorate and it's an elected position uh, because that's how it was put into the city charter um, so, to say my piece, I'm not going to go on and on and on forever tonight. And uh, just thank everyone. Hope everyone had a nice Easter. Thank you. Go ahead. Jeff? Well, um, I guess since there's nobody over there, um, I was asked, Lisa, if you could send a memo to the mayor and the administration, because I'd like the monthly statements that are required to be given to us by the department heads. Okay. And, and then uh, I would also like to request that at next week's work session, we, we invite Joe Clifford of the Energy Group Service um, at the September 19, 2013 council meeting. Council approved resolution 2013-97, which approved the uh, performance contract request for proposals. I believe that we, the council, should uh, provide with uh, an update on the outstanding RFPs, and I'm recommending a short presentation be made by the city, to the city council, by the top two energy service companies, which were Solidium and Smart West. That's with yeah. Joe Clifford. And um, I guess all the other questions I can't get answered with tonight. Um, so I just wanna thank uh, the department heads that did come tonight, and everybody else that showed concern. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff. Well, as again, i like to thank everybody for attending. Uh, your input is always important to us. 
thank you for coming and giving uh, reassurance to uh, our union people that their health benefits are going to remain the same. Thank you for bringing your problems up. Uh, thank you about the prostitution. You bet me to it tonight, but uh, <laughs> I was going to get to it later on. Uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, your support. And please, I want you to understand, and, and Sam will tell you, sometimes the whole story is not in the paper because we didn't have anybody to discuss it with, okay? We have to bring things out and ask questions. That's one of the reasons we've been asking for department heads to be here so we can get answers. We had a camera system in place. We took a lot of heat when this one was coming out because those people had to pay for those cameras and they weren't operating. We wanted to make sure these cameras were gonna do the job. It's one thing to pay one time, it's one pay to, thing to pay twice, okay? You know, fool me twice, the old story. So we wanna make sure that we're getting our money's worth and everybody is still being taken care of. We were concerned about the patrols. We wanted to know if the other neighborhoods were gonna be also watched over. Not that we were favoring one neighborhood because this is what we were getting yelled at by the other sides as well. Why are you only doing for Alter Street? What about us? What about? So we, ha we have to make sure, just like a family, we take care of all the children in the family. It's the same way with the departments. I'd like to thank the chief for explaining everything tonight. I'd like to thank you for also letting us know what's gonna happen with the fire department because that's a piece of gossip we would have probably found out after the fact because we don't get information. But at least we know now where we're headed with a pumper truck, thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank Fallon because she was quite beneficial tonight and for taking the time to come here for us. We appreciate it. And I wanna say good night, but thank you very much. You all had good questions, good input. And that's what we want to hear. So thanks again. Thank you, Jeannie. Dave? <laughs> David said enough I don't tonight. know if you want to hear anything else from me tonight. I, I just thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, first of all, Chief, thank you very much. You know what? It, it goes to prove that when we have a department chair here, like yourself and Fallon here, to answer questions that we can accomplish so much more. Would that we had everybody here that we were supposed to, because then we really could accomplish something. Uh, and, and it doesn't mean that we always have to see eye to eye. I've never seen eye to eye with anybody in my life. And there's a joke in there. But, except, especially this guy who broke my chair. But, uh, um, the, the fact of the matter is that, that it, these are not easy jobs. And, and therefore, I thank you. I, now, it's 2014. If the last one was in 2004, I think we need to start looking at very seriously. And anything I can do to help on out in, in investigating that, getting census materials or whatever, you know that I'll be more than happy to do. But I think we need to do that because there's more of this city which is in a lower income than has ever been before. Uh, and I think we can probably do a lot more with that. Um, thank you for putting up with me tonight. Uh, uh, Mr. Bass, there are stories about when Mr. Monday was uh, appointed to the Water Authority and when I was appointed to Water Authority. I'm not even going to get into that tonight. Uh, I'll be more than happy to speak with you anytime that you would like to about that uh, because that, that part, you know what, one of the things that you find out when you hear commercials, there's, there's usually one little grain of sand and one little grain of sand that was true. Yeah, I was involved in a court case. Uh, it, it, it sounds a little different now than what it was really portrayed to be in an ad, wasn't it? And, and, and the same thing is true with a lot of other things. There are a lot of people who like to wrap lies around a little grain, a little grain, and that's it. Oh, yeah. and, and I get tired of that. And, and you know what? I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I get Ajahn every time I come here. I want you to know that as a little guy. And, and, and am I going to say the right things? Am I going to try to do the best that I can? I'm going to do the best that I can, whether you like it sometimes or whether you don't. Because we're like parents. Because that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay? That's the way it's supposed to be. And if you want to talk to me, talk to me. And if you don't, then don't. Oh, well. Okay? <laughs> Everybody have a great night, and thank you for listening to me. Thank God you, God bless. <laughs> I'll just be brief. I just have two things. I just want to... Thank Council for voting for the Benecon. It's going to save between 62 and 248,000. That's good news for Hazelton. I hope, 
I hope that gets printed somehow, Sam, <laughs> in Big your letters. newspaper. Uh, the other thing I have to say is uh, about the potholes. I, I mean, there, there's, there's been some stories about the, the machine we were interested in purchasing. Uh, I know Kingston is using it. I'm going, I, I called uh, Kingston late today. I got their answering machine. I talked to their, uh, the director of administration, his answering machine. I hope he calls me tomorrow. I'd like to go up and see it and see if it works. And if, yeah, we and if it works. I also called the mayor, too. If, <laughs> He's a friend. Yeah, well, we're so we're, we're going to have to take a look at How this about machine. That? So, so if we could at least see if this machine works and somehow try to help fix some of the potholes in Hazleton. I know it's a big problem. And uh, that should be on our priority list. And uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at the machine. And, and if it works, somehow find a way to, to get it to Hazleton and, and fix the potholes. And, and that's we we discussed this. We, I mean, we want to see. We are not just taking somebody's word for it who didn't check it out and, and actually find out what it's about. We've seen <laughs> praise of this machinery from the Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Kingston, Pittston area. And they're already purchasing a second one because they like it. It doesn't hurt to find out. And this is what we intend to do. If it's good for the city, fine. If not, we'll tell you the same thing. It's not. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank uh, you. Meeting adjourned. Move.